Here we are. All right. So let's see. Guys, what we're going to do today, we are going to talk about 5.1. So 5.1 is fundamental trig identities. And um, so part of, part of this course is verifying what we call trigonometric identities. And, and what an identity means is that you have an equation. For the most part, you got an equation. And you're going to show that one side of the equation is equal to another side. And you're going to do that using these kind of identities that we have, like the reciprocal identities. Like we know that the cosecant is the same thing as the 1 over sine, or the secant is 1 over sine, or cotangent is 1 over tangent, stuff like that. Um, those quotient identities, Pythagorean identities, and we didn't really talk about them too much, but they're, they're there. We'll, we'll use them if we need to, the even and odd uh, identities, okay? So what we really want to do here is see if we can't figure out some of this stuff. All right. And so the problem here says simplify the expression, write the final form with, with no fractions, okay? So what we want to do is we want to see if we can simplify this. Hello. We want to see if we can simplify this thing here. So what I want to do here is I want to see, is there any way that I can rewrite some of these terms? So cosecant, what's another way to write cosecant? And I'm going to do this so you can see it. What's another way for us to write cosecant? One over sine, right? So let's do this. Let's put one over sine x. Okay, times cosine squared x. Guys, uh, just an idea. Normally, when you have like a sine or a cosine, I'm not really going to mess with those. I'm going to sort of see if I can alter the other. Four. So we have six trig functions, right? We got a total of six trig functions. If I see a sine or a cosine, I usually leave those alone. Anything like tangent, cotangent, uh, cosecant, and secant, I'm going to see if I can rewrite those, okay? So I leave my cosecant squared x alone times... What's another way for me to write secant of x? 1 over cosine, right? OK. So guys, well, so hold on. We're going we're gonna to go slow here. So think about it this way. I'm going to think of this here as being over 1, OK? So cosine squared x means how many cosines do we have? We got two of them, right? That's why it's cosine squared. So won't this cosine of x cancel with one of those okay so now what i want you to notice we're going to have let's go ahead and multiply straight across what is one times cosine x cosine x what is sine of x times one sine of x okay so now look we have a cosine over a sine and it says write the final form with what no fractions i got a fraction is there another way for me to write cosine of x over sine of x? It's going to be which one? Cotangent, right? So this here is just the cotangent of x. Okay. So this is what we mean by simplifying uh, our expression. We're going to see if we can sort of rewrite them in, in different formats, all right? Okay, so look, let's let's see if we can do the same thing for number two. So I'm going to just kind of scroll over here. I'm going to bring this down so we can see our identities at the same time. Okay, so if it helps, guys, cosine squared x, if it helps you, you can do this. Cosine of x and another cosine of x. If it helps you, write it out twice because just to, under, just to make sure that we remember that's what squared means to do. Let's go ahead and do it. Okay, I'm going to leave my sine x alone. But I am going to rewrite. I am going to rewrite the cotangent. What's another way for us to write cotangent as a as a fraction? Cosine over sine, right? Right here. Okay. Cosine of x over sine of x. Okay. Now think about it like this. Think of this part over here over one. Won't this sine of x and that sine of x cancel out. Okay. So look what we have. We have cosine x and another cosine x. And on the bottom, since these here canceled out, we still have another cosine x is down here downstairs. What's going to happen now? We can cancel this guy here with that guy there. 
and all we're left with is So I want to point something out here. Look at what the directions are asking me to do. The directions are asking us to simplify the expression, meaning however many terms we have, we've got to make it into less terms, right? We're trying to make those terms smaller, okay? And then obviously we want to have no fractions at the end, okay? So let's see if we can do this, okay? So now, when, I, when I'm looking at number three, and I'm going to kind of just do this right now, and we'll, I'll come back and pull up my identities again. When I'm looking at problem number three, I'll, what I want to try to do here is I'm going to think about this one as one over one, okay? Now, in order for me to subtract fractions, we have to have a common denominator, don't we? So between tangent squared of x and one, what do you think my common denominator would be? Tangent squared of x, right? So look, we're going to multiply by tangent squared of x on the bottom, and we're going to do the same thing on the top. Because I want you to notice what I have right here. Right here we have 1 over 1. Isn't tangent squared of x over tangent squared of x the same thing, 1 over 1, except now we're writing it with, with different terms? Okay. So we're going to have one single fraction. Since this is my denominator, I'm going to put that downstairs tangent squared of x, and on the top, look what we have. We have secant squared of x, and then, let me get my eraser right here, so you can see it, minus tangent squared of x. Okay. All right, so now we got to figure out, okay, is there anything we can do here? So I want to scroll back, because I want us to use some of these identities. And, and look what we have, guys. Look what we have on the top. We have a secant squared x minus tangent squared x. And what I want us to do is I want us to look at our identities. These identities right here. Do any of these identities involve both a tangent squared x and a secant squared x? Do any of them up there have it? Yeah. The Pythagorean identity, this one right here, right? Okay. So... <clears throat> I'm going to rewrite that identity right over here, y'all. So tangent squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x. Okay. Now, what did we have in our problem? We had a secant squared minus tangent squared. Okay. I just want to know what words we have. If I were to take this term here and I were to move it to the other side, what kind of tangent squared is it right now? What's the sign of that tangent squared x? It's positive. So when we cross equal sign, what's going to happen to it? It's going to become negative. So we're going to have 1 equals secant squared x minus tangent squared x. Okay. So the reason why I'm bringing that up is look what we have right here and look what we have right here. We got the same thing, don't we? And this piece right here is the same thing as what number? So now I have 1 over tangent squared of x. Is there any identity that tells me what is 1 divided by the tangent? Cotangent. So this right here, y'all, is going to be cotangent squared of x. And remember what we're doing. We're simplifying it. Look how many terms we had when we started off with. We had secant squared of x uh, over tangent squared of x minus 1. And now we just have squared x. So again, what we're trying to do here, rewrite those, those pieces, okay? All right. Let's take a look at number 4. Yes, of course. Sorry. Yes. We're good? Okay. All right, so guys, for number four, what I want to do here is I'm going to look at the top part just right now. Do we have any like terms? Is there anything we can factor out of there? We can take out of what? A cosine squared x, right? 
So look, let's do that. Let's take out a cosine x, not cosine squared x, but a cosine x. And now we're left with a cosecant squared x minus 1. Okay. Is there anything we can factor out of the bottom down here? Are there any like terms there? Yeah. We have a cosine of x as well that, are, that they both have. And if we take that out, y'all agree with me, we'd be left with a cosecant of x plus 1? So far, are we doing okay? Yeah? Wait just a second. All right. Guys, what's going to happen with those cosine of x's in the front? Cancel out, right? So let's get rid of this guy and let's get rid of this guy. Okay, we're not finished yet, but I'm going to show you something over here on the side real quick, and I'll come back to it. John, I don't want you to, I don't want you to worry about it. We're going to come back to it a little bit. Does anybody remember how do you factor a squared minus b squared? Anybody remember how we factor this? It was something called the difference of squares. Y'all remember this formula? A minus b and a plus b, right? So, like, so I'm just going to make this up. If I said, what's x squared minus 49? You'd say x minus 7 and x plus 7, right? And I'm going to ask you one more. Suppose I said, what's z squared minus 1? How would you factor z squared minus 1? Anybody know? Look at the pattern that I'm doing here, guys. So if those are squares. I'm putting just the terms in the front. And the only difference is one is minus, one is plus. So look, what's going to give me x squared? x and x. What's going to give me 49? 7 and 7. 1 is minus, 1 is positive, right? So if I had z squared minus 1, what am I going to put in the front here? z and z. What number is going to give me 1 when I square it? 1. And what am I going to put on the signs here? Negative and positive, right? Okay. So the reason why I was, and you guys, that's just, a, that's just one of the factoring rules, right, that, we, that somebody told you about probably a long, 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 long time ago. But the reason I'm doing that right now is I want you to look at this piece here. Think of this guy here as our Z. And look, we already know what to do when we have a 1, right? So if this is cosecant squared of X. Won't we write cosecant of X? minus 1 and cosecant of x plus 1. And all I'm doing is I'm using this rule right here, like this example, kind of with this problem, except instead of a z, we got a cosecant, right? Does that make sense? All right. What did we already have on the bottom? A cosecant of x plus 1, right? So now look what's going to happen here. This guy and that guy are going to cancel out. And all we're left with is cosecant of x minus 1. Okay. So the point that I'm trying to make here with, with some of these problems, we're going to be using some of those factoring kind of properties that we did in college algebra or that if any of you all took. I don't, I don't know if any of y'all ever took a, a remedial or developmental math course, but maybe you remember this from high school, I don't know. But if you've got to use like some of those kind of factoring formulas, that's in essence, that's what we're doing. But instead of having like x squared minus 49 or y squared minus you know, 64, now we're going to have cosecant squared x minus 1, something along those lines, okay? But the ideas are going to, the, prop, the, the idea is going to be the same, it's just going to be, you know, a little bit different in that they're trig functions now. Okay, so we have some guidelines. How do we how do we verify trig identities? So what I have here it says work with one side of the equation, usually the more complicated side, and keep the other side in mind as your final goal. Uh, look for opportunities to apply the fundamental identities. If the expression is a product or a quotient of factors. Consider the reciprocal and quotient identities. If squared terms are present, look to see if terms can be grouped in terms uh, grouped in one of the forms of a Pythagorean identity. Uh, mm -hmm. If the expression involves a negative argument, consider using the even and odd function identities. And then it says apply basic algebraic techniques such as factoring, multiplying terms, combining like terms, and writing fractions with a common denominator. 
And then it says, consider writing, writing for, uh, expressions ex explicitly in terms of sine and cosine. And so guys, I think, I'm gonna double check something right, real quick. Oh, here we go. I wanna say that I put it in here, but I'm gonna double check. Where is our, we're in week five, right? Did I put it in here? Here we go. Hints for verifying trig identities. So guys, this is a document that I used when, when I was teaching all this stuff. Uh, oh man, why did that come out looking that way? Let me try something here. You know, you can print it. Uh, let's see, that looks a whole lot better. And I'm gonna just do this for those people who are watching at home. I don't think anybody's watching at home, but at least it'll also come out this way. Yeah, nobody's watching at home. On the video. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so this is the same thing, except I just wrote this up a whole, a whole long time ago. But look what it says: learn the fundamental, fundamental identities given in 5.1. We have those, you know, quotient identities, Pythagorean identities, stuff like that, right? Uh, try to rewrite the more complicated side of the equation so it's identical to simple side. That's exactly what the step number one said over there. Uh, usually, any factor in our indicated algebraic uh, operations should be performed. For example, the expression sine squared x plus 2 sine x plus 1 can be factored into sine x plus 1 squared. Okay. Um, the sum or difference of two trigonometric expressions, such as 1 over the sine of uh, theta plus 1 over cosine of theta, can be added or subtracted just by getting common denominators, right? Stuff like that. Uh, as you select substitution, keep in mind that you're not that you're not changing because it represents your goal. For example, to verify tangent squared of x plus 1 equals 1 over cosine squared of x, try to think of an identity that relates tangent x to cosine x. So since we know secant is 1 over cosine, we can write it that way, right? Uh, and then it says if an expression contains 1 plus sine x, multiply both the numerator and denominator by 1 minus sine x would give us 1 minus sine squared x which then could be replaced with cosine squared x, okay? So we're gonna use some of these hints in doing our problems, okay? So let me stop sharing this, come back to our notes and see if we can't figure this out. Okay, so it says verify that the equation is an identity. So <clears throat> first thing I wanna do here is I see negatives in here, and it says, if the expression involves a negative argument, consider using the even or odd function identity. Okay, so I'm going to scroll back up here, y'all. Okay. So we got some info up here, even and odd function identities. So what do we have? It says um, cosine of negative x is the same thing as cosine of x. Sine of negative x is a negative sine of x. So let me see what we got in our problem. Okay, so we have cosine of negative x. I know that's the same thing as cosine of x. What about secant? Secant of negative x is the same thing as secant of x. So I'm just going to rewrite this part as secant of x. Plus, now let's take a look, tangent of negative x. So tangent of negative x is a negative tangent, okay? So I'll just write it like this, a negative tangent of x. A negative cosecant of x should be a negative uh, cosecant x, okay? Negative cosecant x, oops. Okay, now guys, I am multiplying them, so I'm going to make sure that I understand that I'm multiplying them there. Is equal to secant of x plus 1. Okay, I'm just going to put this over here for a second. All right, so let's take a look here. Cosine x and cosecant of x. Let's see if we can do something with this piece, okay? So cosecant of x, I'm going to think of this over 1. What's another way for us to write secant of x? Anybody know? The secant is one over what? Anybody know? One over cosine, right? So look, we're gonna go like this, one over cosine of x. 
Now, I'm going to come back and I'm going to look at these two pieces. So, guys, let me ask you a question. A negative times a negative is a positive, right? Okay, so let's do this. So we're going we're gonna to write plus. Now, what's another way for me to write tangent of x? Sine over what? Sine over cosine, right? Good. Sine of x. Uh, I haven't, oh, okay, sorry. So that plus one is right over here. I have, I'm not touching this side just yet. Okay, I'm still working with my left side. Because remember what it told me to do? It said work with a more complicated side. So that's what we're doing. Okay. And, and what we said here, uh, John, was a negative times a negative was going to give us a positive. So I'm not worrying about my signs anymore. Now, what's another way for me to write cosecant of x? No, 1 over what? 1 over 1 over sine of x, right? Okay. So now, let's see. Guys, let me ask you a question. What's going to happen with this cosine here and this cosine here? They're going to cancel. So those are going to cancel out. We're going to end up with 1. What's going to happen with this sign and this sign? They're going to cancel as well. We're going to end up with a plus 1 over cosine of x. Okay. Now, is there another way for me to write 1 over cosine of x? There's our secant of x. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. Is this piece here equal to what we had on the right side, which is that piece there? Okay. So, Guys, the one thing that I really, really, really want to emphasize is I'm going to come back to these identities. Now, guys, uh, right now, the quiz number one is open, right, on Alex, and you have until Wednesday to do it. Remember, we did this last Wednesday, and we said, look, you get two shots, but the second time, you only got to, you only got to do the questions that what? That you, that you got wrong, right? That you missed. Okay. So when you're taking that quiz, you have access to all your notes, right? You have access to all that. So if you want to rewatch the video if you're taking the quiz, you can do that as well. The same thing is going to happen when it comes down to taking the test, right? But the one thing that I would recommend that you do, these identities, you really want to know them, simply for the reason that if you have to go back and look at the identity for every single small part, then it's going to take you a lot longer to get through the problem then if you already know that, hey, uh, cosecant is 1 over the sine, or secant is 1 over cosine, or tangent is sine over cosine, if you know those identities, those identities uh, a little bit better, you're going to be able to get through the problem quicker. Not that you can't do it with, you know, using this stuff here, but it's going to save you time, right? Think about, like I said before, you're writing an essay, every single word is, is in red because you misspelled it. you got to go back, check, 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 right? You don't want to miss, you know, you kind of want to do the same thing here. I'm sorry, go ahead, John. Yes. So all we did here, John, when we came back, we said, look, this cosine and this cosine are going to cancel. That's going to leave me with a 1, right? This sign here and this sign here are going to cancel. That's going to leave me with a 1 over cosine. And 1 over cosine is the same thing as? secant of x, and what, what did we have on the right side? Secant of x plus 1. Well, 1 plus secant of x is the same thing as secant of x plus 1. Does that sound good? Good, good. Okay. So, guys, let's take a look at the next problem that we have here, okay? And and look, look what we have. We have 1 over the secant minus tangent minus 1 over the secant plus tangent equals 2 tangent of x. Now, remember what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to work with the more complicated side. So which side is more complicated, the left or the right? The left. The left's more complicated, right? The right is this 2 tangent of x. So I'm going to pull up one more thing so that you guys can see what it is I was referring to. And let me see. Okay. <clears throat> do you see right here where it says, oops, if the expression involves... 1 plus sine of x, uh, multiplying both the denominator by 1 minus sine of x would give us that 1 minus sine squared. And I said, this is also going to work for 1 minus sine x, 1 plus cosine x, 1 minus cosine x, right? Things like that. 
So when I look at our problem that we have here, look at my denominator. My denominator is secant of x minus tangent of x. The other one is secant of x plus tangent of x. So guys, if I wanted to get a common denominator for, I'm just dealing with the left side. I'm not going to even mess with the right for right now. What do you think my common denominator between this piece here and this piece here would be? Anybody know? Okay, so I, I want you to make, I don't want you to make it hard. Think about it. Guys, let me just ask you a real, real basic question. 1 over A plus 1 over B. What's my common denominator? AB. Okay, so you're going to go like this AB and then go AB, right? And you're going to say, look, what do I have here that I did not have there? So look, look at this piece here. What do I have on this piece here that I did not have over here? The B. That means we multiply this guy by B and that guy by B. So B times A, A, B. B times 1 is B. We're going to play the same game over here. We're going to say, look, what do I have right here that I didn't have before? So we multiply this guy by A. We've got to multiply that, by, that guy by A. So that's an A. B times A, same thing as A, B. And then we would say this is B plus A over AB, right? Okay. So look, we're going to do that same rule right here. Okay. So <clears throat> what do you think my common denominator is going to be? Let me ask you a question. Is that denominator the same as this one? They're different, right? So remember when we had A and we had B, what did we say we did with them? We multiplied them together. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So guys, we're going to go slow, 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 slow. So look, we're going to go like this. Secant of x minus tangent of x. Secant of x plus tangent of x. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Secant of x minus tangent of x. Secant of x plus tangent of x. Okay? Now, we're, just like we did before, we're going to play that same game. What piece did I put down here that we did not have the first time? Which one did we? Which one did we add? Which one did we? What was the additional piece that we brought in down here that we didn't have to begin with in the first part? There you go. Secant of x plus tangent of x. Okay. Now there's a. I don't know if y'all can see, so I'm going to do that just so you can see it. There is a minus in the middle. So we're going to do the same thing over here. What piece did we bring in over here that we didn't have the first time? There you go. So I'm going to put a minus right here. Guys, I am going to put this part in parentheses because i got to subtract the whole dealio. Okay, I'm going to remind you, we're going to come back to this problem. I'm going to remind you of something. I need. I want to do it by reminding you guys because I think it makes it easier. But I'll, I'll tell you what, we won't even do it that way. We'll go like this. We're going to start multiplying. What is secant x times secant x? It's actually secant squared x, okay? So the, the x, guys, isn't being squared. The function itself is, okay? What is secant of x? Uh, times tangent of x is going to give me just secant x tangent x. Okay, let's not this let's let's keep it simple for right now. Secant of x times tangent of x. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing right here. What is a negative tangent x times secant? Yeah, and guys, I'm going to write it like this. Remember, the order is not really important. So I'm going to write it with the secant part coming first because I want us to I want us to really understand that those terms really are the same. So if it's secant x times tangent x or if it's tangent x times secant x, it doesn't really matter. They're the same piece. Okay, last piece. What is tangent x or negative tangent x times a positive tangent x? A negative. So a negative tangent times a positive tangent. Neg, well, hold on. So you're most. Let me ask you a question. What is negative x times positive x? Negative x squared. What's negative y times positive y? Negative y squared. 
So negative tangent x times positive tangent x is just a negative tangent squared x. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm telling us that is look what's going to happen to these two middle pieces. They're going to go away. Okay. So, let's go ahead and start taking care of the top. So, guys, this piece here, I'm just going to copy it down. I'm going to write secant of x. plus tangent of x. Now, remember what I have here. I have a minus sign, so I've got to think about it as a negative 1. What is a negative 1 times secant? Negative secant, okay. So I'm erasing that stuff there because it's in my way. Negative secant x. And a negative 1 times a negative tangent is just a positive tangent x, right? And I'm going to come back and get rid of this, too, because I don't need it anymore. All right. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Do you agree with me that this secant x and that secant x will cancel out? Okay. How many tangents do we have on top? Okay. So look what we're going to write. We're going to write 2 tangent of x on the bottom. Since this piece here and this piece here cancel, all we're left with is secant squared x minus tangent squared x. Okay. Now, remember what we said we're going to do. We've got to see if we can use all of our identities. I'm going to scroll back up here to the top, guys. And do you remember earlier we took this identity here and we rewrote it like this? And we said that secant squared x minus tangent squared x was the same thing as what number? Okay, so look, we're going to come back to our problem. Let's see if I can find it. Here we go. So we said secant squared x minus tangent squared x is the same thing as 1. And 2 tangent x divided by 1 is just 2 tangent of x. And isn't that what we had on that right side? Wasn't that what we were... I'm gonna, I know I know I'm zooming way out, but I want to pull up the original problem. Look what we had on this side. Two tangent of x, right? So, you, do you see what I'm getting at? So, what are we doing? We're working with a more complicated side to see if we can simplify it, see if we can break this down and get to the side that's a little bit more difficult. Yes, sir. So these questions, are we, are we showing our work on the wide and people That's exactly all we're doing. That's all we're doing here. So so think about it this way. John, these problems, they're telling me, hey, this side and this side are the same. Why are they the same? Because I can rewrite some pieces to make it look like, and, and if you start rewriting those pieces, things start canceling out like we multiplied here and those secant tangent x and those secant tangent x one was negative and was positive, they canceled out. Right, our terms were able to be reduced, but that's all you're doing, right? That's all you're doing here. Okay, so let's come back over here, and we're going to do exactly the same thing for this problem, right? And again, what does it take? It just takes time, guys. Okay, so the one thing I want to emphasize for these problems out of uh, 5.1, they're not necessarily short problems, okay? They take a little time to do. Remember the objective. The objective is we are going to rewrite one term uh, in terms of another. Okay. So <clears throat> when I look at this problem, and I look at when I'm looking at number seven, y'all, and I'm looking at say the bottom part of it, where it says secant of x plus tangent of x. A little while ago, right now, just a, just a little while ago, we found out that here we go. We know that there's an identity that says, well, secant squared x minus tangent squared x is equal to what number? Is equal to 1. Okay. So I know that I don't have squares, that I don't have a minus in the middle. But this is what we can do. We can go like this. We can say, look, this is cosine of x. And on the bottom, we already have a secant. 
We already got a secant x and a plus tangent x. If I multiply both the top and the bottom by secant of x minus tangent of x, then, and I'm going to work with the bottom first, y'all. Okay? I'm going to work with the bottom first. So look, secant of x times secant of x again is going to be secant squared x, right? Secant of x minus tangent of x is going to be a minus secant x tangent x. Now, I'm going to do the same thing here. Tangent of x times secant of x. Guys, I'm going to write it with the secant part coming first just because I want us to understand that these terms here really are like terms. Which one do you put first or put second? It doesn't matter. Think about it when you have like an algebraic expression and you have a 4xy and you have a 7yx. They're still like terms. They have an x and a y. And then finally, tangent x times another, uh, but times a negative tangent x now is a negative tangent squared x, right? What's going to happen to those middle pieces that we underline? They're going to cancel out, right? Okay, now guys, let me ask you a question. So when I'm, if, I, if I'm doing another problem like this again, look what we multiplied. We multiplied secant x plus tangent x times secant x minus tangent x. Those pieces end up canceling. And I'm going to come back and we'll deal with the top in a minute. But on the bottom, we're going to have secant squared x minus tangent squared x. The point that I want to make here, y'all, is that I know what happens when I multiply a secant x plus a tangent x times a secant x minus a tangent x. I'm always going to get secant squared minus tangent squared. Does that make sense? It's always going to be that. I'm showing you like why it's working, but when you're doing a problem like this later on, you don't actually have to do that. You already know, hey, those little pieces are going to cancel. It's going to be this squared minus that squared, right? Okay. Now, let's deal with the top. We're going to go slow. We're going to say this is the cosine of x oops, times the secant of x minus the cosine of x times the tangent of x. Okay. Now, what I'd like to do, I'd like to see if I can simplify these guys here. I'm going to think of cosine of x as just cosine of x, but I'm going to write it over 1. What is secant of x? What's another way for us that we can write secant of x? 1 over cosine. So look what's going to happen here. 1 over cosine of x. What do you think is going to happen with those cosine pieces? They're going to cancel because one's upstairs and one's downstairs. Okay. Minus, let's see. I'm going to leave my cosine of x alone. But I'm going to write it as cosine x over 1. Is there a way that we can write a tangent using a fraction, something over something? Sine over cosine. And look what's going to happen with those cosines. Those are also going to cancel. Okay. So what are we going to be left with? If this guy here cancels with this guy here, what's the only thing we're left with? A 1 minus... And if this guy here cancels with this guy here, what's the only thing we're left with? Minus sine of x. And then do you all remember using that identity? What did we say secant squared x minus tangent squared x was? That was equal to 1. Where are we? Equal to 1. I'm going to zoom back in here where we were. So isn't this just 1 minus sine x? And I want to say... Isn't that what we had on the right side over here? And we were able to get there. That's all we're trying to do, y'all. That's all we're trying to do. It's showing all your work. And again, remember what they're telling you. They're telling you this is what the answer is. When you break this down, you should get 1 minus sine of x. Why? 
Oh, you got to just break your pieces down. Does that make sense? Okay, that's a great question. So we're going to do that right now. So check this out. Let's see. Let's come back over here. Here we go. And let's do this. And let's see. We're going to go to student view so we can see exactly what it looks like. Uh, let's go like that. Okay. So this this is section 5.1. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Let's go back to assignments. 5.1. I'm not letting the access it. Okay. Let's see. Maybe. Let me just let me let me do this real quick. Maybe because I do have the quiz going. I'm just gonna submit it. Yeah. I'll take a zero. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll get on there. We'll get on there real quick. Give me one second. Okay. So let's see. Um, let me see if I can pull up a question that's a little bit more. That's what I'm looking for here. Uh, let me see. We'll we'll do this one here in a second too. But I'm trying to find one that where it actually says. Verify that this side is equal to that side. Okay, here we go. Verify that this equation is identity. And so what we're going to do here, the first thing I would probably do here is I'm going to, because I have those negatives in here, I'm going to have to figure out what is, what's my rule here, right? So I'm going to say, um, tangent x times this here would be so I'm gonna put a bracket like the way we have in the problem. This is like this. Okay, so odd even, I know I'm gonna do odd even, but why is it that I'm not able to do what I want to do? Cotangent x Oh, you know what I think I have to do? I think I have to use these things here. There we go. X. No, I don't. Uh, come on. Man. It shouldn't be that hard to do. Trying to see, like, it's asking me to, to simplify, verify this equation as identity. So, like, I'm going to do this real quick, y'all. Okay. So, like, if I was doing this, and John, I'll come back to what you're asking for in a second. But if I was doing this by hand, this is what I would do. And I know that's not what you're asking, but this is what I would do. I would go cotangent of x. This right here should be a negative cotangent x. This right here should be a negative tangent of x. And then what I would do is I would say, well, look, let's go ahead and start multiplying. So when I multiply, this is going to be a negative cotangent squared x minus cotangent x times the tangent of x. So I'm going to say this is negative cotangent squared x minus, now remember, I can rewrite cotangent as 1 over tangent of x times the tangent of x. So what's going to happen with those tangents? They're going to cancel out. So I would say this is a negative cotangent squared x minus 1. And then what I would do from here is I would come back and I would say, look, 
I gotta have an identity somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. Here we go. Do I have any Pythagorean identities that involve the cotangent? One plus the cotangent squared of x is equal to the cosecant squared of x. Okay. So now let's see. I can find where I was. Gonna lose it. Yeah, I lost it. Okay, here we go. And our identity was something like cotangent squared x plus one. I want to say it was something like this. Cotangent squared x plus one was equal to cosecant squared x, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I would say from here is, look, both those terms have a what? So let's factor out a negative one. And let's write this as the cotangent squared of x plus one. And this is going to be negative cosecant squared of x. And if you look right here, isn't that what we had? Right? So maybe, so if I do it that way, uh, Jennifer, and then I come back over here, maybe what I would probably do is go negative cosecant squared of x and say I did this using the odd and even because of those odd and even, right? And if I go validate, oh, that line is incorrect. Yeah, it's got to be like a step-by-step -step thing. So maybe, so I'm just trying to figure out what... <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how. Yeah, hold on. It's, it's got to be easier than this. So let me come back to my to my first line when we were right here. You're talking about going with the explanation? So here's our, yeah, so we're using our even and odd function rules, right? Isn't that what we had? If you look at this piece right here, that piece, isn't that what we, oops, isn't that what we had, like pretty much right here? And let's see. Okay, so this is how they wrote it. So here's our odd even, and they said algebra. They said reciprocal, algebra, Pythagorean. Okay, so let's try this again. And let's see. Okay, try another. So, okay, so we're going to do this. We're going to say this should be negative tangent. And then um, Yeah, x. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go negative tangent squared x. So negative tangent squared x. Uh, and then negative. I'm just, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to do too many steps into one. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. Yeah. So remember, so yeah, right here, this negative would pop out in front, and a tangent and tangent is a tangent squared x, right? And then it, um, this negative is also going to pop out in front. So, yeah, I'm trying to figure out exactly what they're asking for. And it's just the format. It's not that we can't do the problem. It's just how do they want me to write it out? You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I know. Let me do this one more time. Yeah. And it's just, again, it just has to deal with the format, the way they're writing it. See, but look, they're putting that bracket out here, too. 
Maybe. So like right here, okay, so look, this would say we're going to go a, neg a negative cotangent of x. Check it. And yes, we're good there. Okay, now here I would put I would put one. Check. Yep. And so this here is going to be uh, negative secant squared x, negative secant squared of x, check, yep, and then there's my identity, right? Okay, so let's, over, so let's return to question. Okay, let's try another again. Why don't I see those, uh, I don't know why my brackets aren't working, like, you know what, I'm going to try one more thing, sorry guys. Negative, and I'm going to do this. X, and then parentheses. Minus and then the X. What am I see at home? Oh, right here. There you go. Thank you. And you know what? I'm gonna fix this real quick. Too. I'm gonna leave my negative. Oops. Right there. There we go. All right. And then here I'll say negative cotangent squared of x minus. I'm gonna put one because I think that's what I put before. And I'm going to put algebra. Oh no. It's one, but maybe they want me to write cotangent so x, tangent x. There you go. And then here I'm going to write negative cotangent so square root of x minus one. And I'll put reciprocal because those cancel out because of the reciprocal identity. And then here I'm going to just put negative, what is it, cosecant squared of x? And we're going to say Pythagorean identity, validate it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of that either, guys. I'm not a huge fan of that either. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's see. Yeah, I know. We're going to try something real quick. Hold on. Second. We're going to go like this. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, four seven uh four seven is due Wednesday, four six is due today. So we're gonna Yeah, it's due by midnight. Four six is due by midnight. Okay, so I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We'll leave we'll leave that one alone. I'm gonna I'm gonna edit this and I'm just gonna give you guys just a handful of problems and then I'll give you one. I'll bring something in guys or I'll upload something uh today and that you guys can work on and you'll have till next Wednesday to turn it in. Okay. I'm just gonna I'm gonna cut some of these problems out. So let's go like this. Let's take those out. I'll just leave you guys with like six problems here. Okay. What do we do? Is this one I just looked at? Let's definitely do that one out because that's going to be a thing. That was one we just did. I'll tell you what. We'll leave that one there, and then whatever these are, 
I just pull these. And yeah, guys, I'll give you, I'll give you a written assignment. So you just got six questions, okay? So this way, because it does take some time to do, and it's just finicky and how it's asking for the answers. But I hope that made sense in how we did it. But John, you had a question that you wanted me to come back to look at. Yes, of course. Which was this one right here. Okay, I'm sorry, say that part again. What part are you? That bottom part? Uh huh. Yes, that's the same thing as one. And then, so this cosine up here and that cosine right there canceled. So all we had left was a one, right? And then this cosine here and this cosine here canceled. So all we had was a sine of x. And anything over one is just the top part. So, so it is, right? So look, this is the left. Look what the right was. And that's what we ended up with, right? So we started with left. And all we're doing, John, is we're manipulating the left-hand side. Right? We're, we're working with the left-hand side. We're doing stuff to the left-hand side. And eventually, we should end up with what we had on the right. Does that make sense? OK. So I'll tell you what. No, we're we're trying to no, we're not necessarily making a fraction. We're trying to get what yeah, remember we're we're working with the more complex side and we're trying to get to the side that's more simpler. Right? So we know that we're gonna get there. We just gotta figure out how do we get there. Okay. So let me give me one second, guys. I want to see what we got here. Okay, so we got we only got four more problems to do. Let's do these four problems. So this will, we won't, we'll skip our break today, today, guys, but we'll do our four problems and then we'll go ahead and call it a day. But I will come up with something and I'll, I'll upload it and I'll send it to you and I'll, let, I'll send you a message later on today, guys, saying, hey, I made an assignment for 5.1. It's got like five questions or whatever. Turn that in next week. And it's kind of supplementing this here because I agree that's, that's a little ridiculous over there. Okay. So, guys, again, the direction saying we're going to work with the more complex side and end up with the side that's less, less complex, right? Let me ask you a question. Does one side look more complicated or less complicated than the other? No, they both look about the same. Okay. So, could we what? Like cross multiply? Okay. So, the only reason we don't want to do that is we want to work with one side to get to the other. Okay, so it doesn't matter what side I work with, whether I work with the left or work with the right. Let's let's stick with working with the left. Okay, so look, we have cotangent of x over cosecant of x minus one. Guys, just like we did before, I'm going to multiply by cosecant of x plus one on the top and on the bottom. Okay, now. We just did this a little while ago. If you were to multiply this out without me having to do it by hand, and I can do it by hand, but do you know what you would get? Does anybody know what you would get if you were to multiply this out by hand? Okay, so let me, I'm going to come back real quick, guys. I'm going to, I want to show you something here. You remember earlier today, where was it? Have to be somewhere over here on the side. Here we go. Do you remember earlier today when we did this problem right here? And we said that if we have A minus B times A plus B, we're going to end up with A squared minus B squared. This right here, guys, is always, 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 always going to be the case. Okay? It's always going to work. A minus B times A plus B, A squared minus B squared. Now, the reason why I want us to know that is it is going to save me a ton of time when I do a problem like this. Think about it like this. Think of this as A minus B and A plus B. And wasn't that going to give us A squared minus B squared, right? What is my A in this case? 
So we're going to say this is cosecant squared x minus, what is my b in this case? There you go. And now you don't have to sit there and try to figure out what you're going to get because this rule is always going to work, right? That's the nice thing about the algebra stuff. It's always going to be there, okay? Now, let's come back and let's do the same thing with the top. So look, the top part, I am going to write it out. I'm going to write cotangent of x times cosecant of x plus cotangent of x times 1 is just cotangent of x, right? Okay. Now, y'all, I want to see if we have some kind of an identity that relates cosecant squared x minus 1. So look, I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to look at those identity. Do I have anything that involves a cosecant squared in my Pythagorean identity? Yes, we do. Right here, this last one, right? So if we take this identity right here, I'm going to rewrite it over here on the side. It's 1 plus cotangent squared x equals cosecant squared x. If I were to move this one that way, we would end up with cotangent squared x equals cosecant squared x. What kind of one would it become? Negative, Negative one. Okay. So cosecant squared x minus one is the same thing as cotangent squared x. Okay. So the reason why we want to know that is look what we have down here on the bottom. On the bottom, we have cosecant squared x minus one. We said that was the same thing as cotangent squared x, didn't it? Okay. Now, I know we just got through multiplying that cotangent of x, right? That's what we did in the, from the very beginning. We actually distributed it out. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have done that just yet. Let's leave the cotangent x out in the front so that we'll have this piece here, okay? So I'm just, I'm going to pretend like I didn't actually multiply that stuff out. Okay, like I'm going to pretend like I didn't really do this step. And why do I want to do that? So what will happen with this cotangent and one of those? They'll cancel. And look what we end up with. What do we still have on the top? Cosecant x plus 1. What do we still have on the bottom? Cotangent of x. And isn't that what we had? Isn't this piece right here? The same as that piece right there. John, am I doing okay with you here? Yeah. So when, when we did actually multiply that out, it was like, oh, you know what? It was unnecessary because we want to cancel this guy with one of those, right? So it's all. We got it, right? Remember what we're trying to do. We want to make one side look like the like the other, right? Okay. All right. So guys, the directions here for number 10 say verify the equation is an identity by by manipulating each side of the, of the equation independently. All this means is what we're gonna do. We're gonna work with one side. And if we get it stuck, what are we gonna do? We're going to start working at the other. And hopefully at some point, we end up with a spot where maybe we, if we stop here and maybe we stop here, if those pieces are in full, then we're so good. Then, then, we're, then we're on the right track, okay? So <clears throat> first thing I want to I want you all to notice, can I factor a sine out of the top of there? Yeah. So look, we're going to factor a sine x out. If I factor a sine x out of here, I'm left with a 1 minus, if we had a sine to the third and we took away one of them, how many signs are we still left with? Two. All right. So. Remember this right here? is one of my Pythagorean identities, right? So if I look at this identity here, y'all, and I want to bring this sign squared x to the other side, what would we be left with? Cosine squared x equals 1 
What happens to that sign? When I bring the sign across the equal sign, what's going to happen to the, the sign of the sign? Negative. Negative. Do we have that piece anywhere in our problem so far? Yeah. yeah. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, look. Yeah, but, let, but let's go ahead and write it just so that we, we see what we're doing. We're going to go like this, and we're going to say this piece right here is the same thing as cosine squared x. And the bottom, we have a cosine squared x. And yeah, you're right, John. Those cosine squared x's are going to cancel. And all I'm going to have is a, is a what? A sine x, right? Okay, well, that's not exactly what I have on the right side. And it's hard for me to do anything with the sign. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, let's see if we can mess with this guy. Okay. What is another way for us to write secant of x? 1 over cosine, right? Okay. And then tangent of x. Guys, couldn't I write tangent of x as sine over x over Cosine of x, can I do that? Okay. Now, I'm still working with the right side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of this guy being over 1, and I'm going to multiply straight across. So I'm going to have sine squared x over cosine x divided by sine x over cosine x. And this here is what we call a complex fraction because we're taking one fraction and we're dividing it by another. But we know how to divide fractions. Remember how we divide fractions? We multiply by the what? The reciprocal of the top fraction or the bottom one? The bottom one. So what's the reciprocal of sine over cosine? There you go. Cosine of x over sine of x. Okay. So now that we do that, Y'all agree that this cosine x here and that cosine x there will cancel out? Right? And then wouldn't this sign cancel with one of those up there? Because sine squared really means that there's two of them. And wouldn't we end up with a sine of x? And isn't that where we ended up with in that problem? So guys, when it tells me to work with each side independently, what it's telling me to do is work with this side. And at some point, you're going to stop. Then work with this side. And at some point, you're going to stop. And hopefully, where you stop here and where you stop here should be the same thing. Okay. All right. So we're almost done here, guys. And then, and like I said, on Wednesday, I'll bring in a handout, and uh, and I might actually bring in something that you can actually write on. But I'll give you an electronic copy as well, and you can use whichever one you prefer. But I'll give you some time in class to work on some of these things so that you can kind of see what's going on. Okay. Uh, so let's take a look here. It says write an algebraic expression as a trig uh, expression. So it says some algebraic expression may be written as trig expression. So, if, if here's my angle theta, remember how we define the tangent? The tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So, the tangent of theta would be x over 2. So, then if I were to take this equation, y'all, and I were to solve it for x, we could think of this being over 1. And like John said earlier, we'd cross multiply, x would be equal to 2 tangent of theta. And uh, secant of theta would be the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So square root of x squared plus 4 over 2. And then if we were to cross multiply again, we'd get square root of x squared plus 4 equals 2 secant of theta. OK. <clears throat> so now it says, for the given, algebra, uh, given algebraic expression, or write the given algebraic expression, excuse me, as a function of theta, where theta is between 0 and pi over 2, by making given, a given substitution. OK, so it says, everywhere we have an x, we're going to replace that x with a 4 sine theta, OK? So look, this is what we're going to do. This is plug and chug, y'all. I'm going to write 16 here minus 4 sine theta squared. Okay. 
So this is still 16 here. Now guys, remember when we're gonna square this piece here, we're gonna square the number in front and we're gonna square the function itself. So what's four squared? 16. Sine theta squared is gonna be sine squared theta, okay? So far so good. Okay. My question to you all, can I factor anything out of these pieces? Is there any piece that's common to both terms? Well, but hold on, what's inside though? What's inside the square root? What's the number that's common to both of them? 16, right? I'm just saying let's go a little slower. And then we're going to write 1 minus sine squared theta. Right. 1 minus sine squared x is the same thing as what? So 1 minus sine squared theta would be cosine squared theta, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write 16 times cosine squared theta. What's the square root of 16? 4. The square root of cosine squared theta would just be cosine theta. Okay. So it, it did, right? The square root and the exponent canceled to give me just the cosine. Okay, because I can't cancel, like when I have an expression like this, I can't cancel this one with that one because it has to be one, I can't cancel like individual piece. It has to be the whole thing. So really what am I doing, what am I doing here? I'm thinking of this 16 if you want to, you don't have to, but I'm thinking of that 16 almost like a four squared, right? So that square root and that square are canceled. But I can't cancel when they're being added or subtracted. I can't cancel individual terms. Yeah, good question, though. All right, guys, we got one more problem the same way. We're going to plug and chug again. Everywhere we have an x, what are we going to plug in? Okay, so let's do it to it. So we're going to go 3 tangent theta squared plus 9 all over x, which is just 3 tangent theta. Okay. okay, so now let's go ahead and square it. 3 squared is good. What are we going to factor out of the top part? 9, very good. Okay. Now, guys, there should be some kind of a Pythagorean identity involving tangent squared theta and 1. And so I'm just going to pull this up real quick so you all can see it. Here we go. So I don't have to keep jumping back and forth. Here we go. If you look right here in the middle, tangent squared x plus 1 is the same thing as secant squared x, right? Okay, so this right here is going to be 9 secant squared theta over 3 tangent theta. Okay. Now, remember, square root of 9 is 3. The square root of secant squared is just secant theta. Okay. What's going to happen to those 3s? Cancel out. Okay. So let's do it like this. Guys, the way I would think about secant, I would think about it as 1 over cosine. Okay. What's the fraction? What fraction allows me to, to rewrite tangent theta? Very good. Sine over cosine. Perfect. Okay. And then remember what we said earlier. How do we divide fractions? We multiply by the reciprocal of the top or the bottom Always the bottom one, right? So I'm going to think about this as 1 over cosine theta times cosine theta over sine theta. What's going to cancel here? Our cosines, okay? 
and then we can write this as one over sine of theta. What's another way to write one over sine theta? Cosecant. Same again. John, did I? Am I okay? I know you said I write a little faster than you do, so I just want to make sure that I haven't lost. It. Okay. Okay, guys, let me ask you a question. If you were to do this on paper, would it be easier than having to do it on the computer just because they're asking you to do a certain format? I guess that's my question to you. Do you think it's easier to do it on paper, like the way we're doing here? Yeah? Okay, so I got to tell you what. On, uh, on Wednesday, I'll bring a handout. We work on it, make sure that we're okay with this kind of stuff. We'll do like two problems together, and then I'll have you do like five on your own. That took them out of the just to make sure that you're good with this stuff. Okay, and then, um, I don't know. We'll figure something out for the test or whatever. I don't. I don't know. I. I know it's a pain in the butt having to do it like that. And we'll see if there's a way we can figure this thing out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So guys, also your class assignments. Uh, class assignment one. It only had two questions. Is due today. So Thomas is giving me his uh, on paper. Do you have yours on paper? Turn it in. If you want to email it to me, make sure you do send it to me by, by the end of the day, guys. I said 415, but if you haven't finished it, just make sure you do get it by the end of the day. I will grade them uh, first thing in the morning. So if um, you know, if you have them, turn them in. If you've already sent it to me, that's perfect. If not, make sure you do turn it in by this evening, and you're good, okay? And guys, I'll I'll uh, like Thomas was giving me his on paper. I'll grade it. Uh, you got yours on paper too? Awesome. I'll grade it. I'll have it back to you by, by Wednesday. Those of you who, who submitted it online, I'll grade it and I'll send you a message back to, to the Blackboard giving you the graded version. Yes. All right, guys. Thank you all for showing up today. Catch you guys on Wednesday. Be safe. Take care. Because we're taking the score root of it. Take care. She's got the beat too. Uh huh.